question is, I grew up in India. I did not read in any history book about Jesus marrying. I learned about Akbar and Umayyum, but not about Jesus. And I have a question. If Jesus lived for 87 years after the crucifixion in Kashmir, and he, the Quran calls him Ru Allah, the spirit of Allah, Noon Allah, the light of Allah, and Kalam Allah, the word of Allah, he had to know the movement that was spreading in the world called Christianity, his followers. Did he not dispute? Did he not say, I'm alive, don't spread this lie that I'm resurrected? Did he not dispute that? Okay. That is my question. Number two. Okay, no, we'll come to the number two afterwards. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Mukhtar. That's what I'm saying, that there are a lot of documents related to this. Even if you go only on one website, Tome of Jesus, you will find all these documents there. That he traveled, there are a lot of evidence in Afghanistan, and if you want to study the book, there is one book published by uh, the European scholars, that was a group of scholars, they traveled to Afghanistan, then they traveled to Kashmir, that is among the dervishes among the dervishes that is available in the bookstores and it was also published about 20 years back so i think uh, that is a wonderful book that you study among the dervishes online Thank you. Order. and i am sure you will get to those references just leave your contact info anybody who, who wishes to have that information just leave your contact info with me thank you yes please a lady over here in your narrative, you said that Quran said that the tomb of Jesus is in Kashmir. Can you show where in Quran it says? Thank you. The word Quran, uh, uh, word Kashmir is not mentioned, but how Quran is indicated. He went to the land of green uh, valleys and running water. That and the is, word. That is in the that okay, is sir, 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 sir. Sir, let him answer the question. Sir, you only have the right to ask a question. We're not holding any discussion. You have every right to decide if this is what I said. Sir, ma'am. This is my interpretation. You have to Ma'am, I completely request you. You have to right. Yes, we'll go to elaborations afterwards. One more. Jesus. I said, where is in Quran? He says that the tomb of Jesus is in Kashmir. Okay, it, thank is, you. It, it is not in the Holy Quran about tomb of Jesus. Yeah. You just said that. No, no. You said no, no, I didn't say that it is in Quran. No, I didn't say that. He's referring it's not the tomb. It's not referred to the tomb. No, I didn't say that it is. Uh, yes. If somebody has recorded, please tell me I have uttered this word. I, I never said that uh, the Quran says there is a uh, mentioned tomb of Jesus in the Holy Quran. No. But you showed a picture in the, uh, the PowerPoint. But, but that's not coming from the Quran. Uh, no, that is, you not that. that is not That is not about tomb of Jesus. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on. Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to refer to the verse in Psalm 30 that the Imam, respected Imam, presented. Uh, which is from the Psalms of David. So David wrote this psalm, and it is a prophecy of, of Jesus. So as he mentioned in verse 2 and 3, it says, I'll just read verse 3. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive. Now, as Imam said, the truth but truth is only one. There cannot be multiple variation of truth. And the question so, is? So if it clearly says over here that this, that you brought me up from the grave, of course a live person never goes to grave. It's the dead person who is buried in the grave. So if he went to the grave and has, has kept me alive, so he, it's clearly referring to the resurrection. It's not referring to anything mm -hmm. else. So why? There is there's such a big confusion of Christ going to Kashmir, which okay. the word itself never Yes, states. your question has been taken. I'll give him an opportunity Thank to you. clarify that. Thank you. This is what I said, that you have every right to differ. 
But to came from grief is that he was also in uh, the brink of grave. He was almost dead and he was considered dead. But the next part is he prolonged his days. The people they tried to kill him and they did their utmost. But God who was the Savior, as in the Holy Quran, that they planned and Allah planned. There was their planning, there was Allah's planning. They wanted to uh, uh, kill him and to keep him in the grave. Almighty Allah brought him from the, uh, that uh, grave and prolonged his days. They wanted to cut short his days. That is. That is correct. Okay. Jesus is alive. So it is prolonged. It's not until 120 days. That's what I'm saying. And that's what the Bible says. That's what the word clearly says. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That is good. <coughs> yeah. If somebody is on the on the cross and he gets a stab wound on his chest, how long he can survive? Because I understand once he gets a wound in his stomach or somewhere, they cannot breathe because his lungs will not work. Okay. And you that then the people who crucified him put his food because it was on a Friday. And they want to go okay, so your question through is... their Sabbath. So he must, he must have, he must have, he must have died instantaneously within 15-20 minutes of receiving his wound because he cannot breathe. Okay, thank you. You are very right. There was no chance of survival. And as Jesus said, I will give you sign of Jonah, as Jonah may for three days and three nights in the belly of the son of man will be for three days and three nights. Can you prove that someone went in the whale's belly and he survived? God has the power to do that. And that God, he saved Jesus. That's the same God raised the Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. He had raised. But it was not reason. This is what I'm saying. Okay. Yes, please. And you told about the story about Kashmir, and you tell 20 years ago there was a book. All this Kashmir thing started in the last 30 years only. There was no historical record, anything, and Jesus was not in Kashmir. And in your slide you showed that uh, uh, Mary was with him. Mary was not with him. Mary died in Ephesus, that is present day Turkey, and there is a town there. I didn't say he married to Mary Mary in that land. I said there was one Buddhist lady, he married to that, and there was another lady. That is a very different issue about Mary Magdalene. I didn't say that he was married to Mary Magdalene. Don't put much in my mouth. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, please. Yes, uh, my question is for the pastor. Um, in Mark it says that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Then in Matthew, it says that Jesus went to John, sorry, Jesus <coughs> went to John, peace be upon him, and demanded to be baptized. The baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. If Jesus was ever sinless, why did he need to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins? Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Um, there were baptism for various purposes in the Bible. Um, one was the baptism that John was giving was for the forgiveness of sin. But baptism was also given when a person converted into Judaism and joined Judaism or, he, or when he starts a mission, a new mission. So when Jesus came to John to be baptized, that was not for the forgiveness of sin, rather because he was going to start his public ministry. He was going to start his mission. Thank you. So I have a follow-up follow question if possible. Yeah. Is, there a, is, is there a reference in regards to this to show that John the Baptist did other uh, baptisms as well? Or because from what, from what I know, John the Baptist only did baptisms of uh, repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Does it say anywhere else in the Bible? I'm just asking. So do you does it say, have any reference? Does it say anywhere else in the Bible that John did these kind of baptisms? No, there is no reference because uh, nobody else came to him uh, to be baptized uh, as the beginning of his mission. Normally, okay. uh, ordinary people came for the forgiveness of sin, but we cannot include Jesus in that because he was born sinless. Even the Quran says that he was sinless, he was pure, holy, right? So we cannot come to this conclusion that he came to John for the forgiveness of sin. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, question there. The question is for Imam. Yes, please. 
I believe that you believe in absolute truth. And if you believe in absolute truth, we, it's not open for us to have our own interpretations. Now, I saw here in one of the things here that you believe that he, Jesus is the faithful and the true. And my question to you is, do you believe, sir, that he's the Lord, he's a liar, or he's a lunatic? He's either one of those. And what would you ask? Okay, thank you. So we'll take this point. According to me, not only Jesus, but all the prophets, they were innocent. They never committed lie. They were the promoter of peace and keeping the people safe from all these uh, immoralities. And he was not a liar. What do you want to hear? Can I? I mean, I, yes, the question ahead. wasn't answered. Yeah, so, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. so, first, first part of it was that uh, you kept saying that it's open to our interpretation. You interpret it yourself, and I would interpret it myself. Yeah. But an absolute truth does not give us the liberty to do that. Absolute truth has only one interpretation. So either you're true or I'm true because I believe in Jesus yeah, Christ. Being the that Lord. is 100%. However, there's the a chance is, that you are right, there is a chance that I'm right. This is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that I am I am holding the truth and you not. But I'm saying I am, sir, in, in the, in the uh, name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because, because the Lord himself, the Lord Jesus himself said, that he came to forgive sins, he came to die, and he came to die for you. And if he died on the cross, if he was willing to be put on the cross uh, for telling a lie, then he was a liar, because he kept speaking about, you know, the world would say he was a good teacher, he was a moral teacher, but if being a moral teacher, if he was lying about the truth, about the fact that he didn't die for our sin, then he was a liar. We don't need him. If he was, uh, you know, this, uh, deluded, if he thought that he was the savior of the world, but you know he tried to save the world, but he was deluded, and he uh, he died on the cross, we know that his teachings uh, prove to us that he was, uh, you know, he was a good moral teacher. So when you remove the fact that he is not a lunatic, when you remove the fact that he could be a liar, we are left with a one fact that he is the Lord, and that's what I want to say. He was not a liar. He came and he brought the light to give the people. But that was for a particular group of people, as it is already mentioned. I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he said, I will call my sheep. And one day there will be one fold and one shepherd. And all the prophets, they came for the same cause, same purpose. So all the prophets, they were innocent. They brought the teaching. They were the best guide for that. But they were for their own time frame. Jesus said in John chapter 9 verse number 5, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. He is no more in this world, he is no more light. Somebody else came after him, he became light. There were many before him, they were lights. So they were the lights of their own time frame. This is what I am saying. Okay, thank you. So we're, we're already pretty much over time. I've had a hand up at the back for a long time. So I'll just give you an opportunity for last question for tonight. Thank you, Peter. Um, I just have a question for uh, Pastor. Okay. If we're talking about complete truth, then why did uh, Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, consider himself a prophet, which is also mentioned a few times in the Bible as well? Like, for example, when he went into Galilee, he said, even in, I believe it's, John 4, 44, where he says even when uh, a prophet comes to his own hometown, he is persecuted. So why did Jesus refer to himself as a prophet? If we're speaking the truth, this is Jesus' own word. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's right. good question. Very good. The, the question is, why did Jesus refer to himself as a prophet? Now, uh, Muslims believe that Muhammad was the last prophet, but they consider Jesus also a prophet. But let me tell you Jesus' own statement. I don't want to say my opinion. Jesus' own statement, he said in Luke chapter 11, verse 36, I think, where he said, the law and the prophets were until John the Baptist. The law and the prophets were until John the Baptist. That means, excluding Jesus, John the Baptist was the last prophet. But then, in Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 18, Moses had made a prediction that God will raise up a prophet for you just like me. Jesus claimed that he is that prophet, the prophet. So from Jesus' own statement, 
excluding Jesus, John the Baptist was the last prophet, including Jesus, Jesus was the last prophet, so Christians believe there is no more prophet to come after Lord Jesus. So, so you are right that Jesus is a prophet. Jesus is not only a prophet, Jesus is the prophet. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so with this we'll conclude the session. I've seen a lot of excitement. Uh, if you know, uh, only a humble opinion that uh, I'll urge the administrators and the organizers of this event to you know hold more of these uh, these uh, sessions where you know we can spare some more time. And uh, as I emphasized before, you know, the purpose is not to approve or disapprove somebody. The purpose is to learn from each other, to learn about each other's uh, beliefs. And I believe. Uh, Many of us who are present here must have, uh, as including myself, have learned a thing or two from this uh, from this event. Um, having said that, now I'll head over to Mr. Manavarshap and he'll uh, manage the program from there. Thank you. We are, you know, running through the time very fast. There are very few remaining concluding items, and then we will, I'm not going to stand between you and the pizza. <laughs> so I'm uh, going to um, invite our uh, National Director of uh, Propagation, Amir uh, Vodaisa, to say a few words, just a uh, quick one, two minutes, and then a couple more things, and then we'll wrap up. Thank Assalamualaikum uh, May peace and blessings of Allah be on you all. Um, on behalf of Pantheon Muslim Jamaat, I would like to um, I would like to acknowledge and thanks to all of you um, that you took some time to came here. Uh, hopefully, you enjoy the program. Um, it's a wonderful um, um, event that uh, a local chapter organized here. So I would like to acknowledge them as well. And um, uh, I assume that you have a lot of uh, questions and um, discussion that might take place after this. Um, there are few uh, individuals here. Uh, you can discuss with them. You can ask uh, the mom, sir, Shima sir is here, pastor is here. So anyone of you, most welcome. Um, but I would like to also take this opportunity to um, announce another program that is happening uh, with the Christian group and uh, MD of Muslim Jamaat. It's in Maple. It's on May 6th. Um, uh, from Christian side, uh, Pastor Johnson is uh, here. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, this specific for this program, please contact uh, him. He has uh, he, he's regularly indulged with the, this kind of activities um, uh, in terms of uh, healthy uh, dialogue. So with this, I would like to say thank you to all of you. Uh, may God have showered mercy on all of you. Um, with uh, with all sincerity and uh, with bottom of our hearts, uh, we would like to welcome you and we would like to thank you for uh, take some uh, you know good time out of your busy schedule, Saturday schedule uh, that you gave us. Thank you. May Allah bless you. Thank you very much. I request food uh, factor Ivan to come to the stage. Please uh, lead us in. Uh, uh, prayer, our uh, concluding prayer, and then we will have our uh, regional uh, president of the Muslim community will follow uh, our concluding prayer. Maybe just bow our heads in acknowledgement that we are in the presence of the Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, our Heavenly Father, that you have given us your light and your truth. You have left, left us in the dark. You have revealed yourself through your servants, the prophets, who have been led by your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, to write down and to speak truths, and in many cases to actually live out that truth. And we pray in the name of Jesus, Isa, Yeshua, who called himself the way, the truth, the life. 
and reassured his disciples before going to the cross, to death, and to ultimately the tomb and resurrection that he would send after this his spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, to lead them to all truth. So I thank you for my brothers and sisters on both sides that have gathered here today to be led into truth. And I pray that you, Holy Spirit, would come and lead us to all truth as was promised by Jesus. We pray these things in the wonderful, precious, and powerful name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you, Pastor Evan. I will uh, now request our uh, president of Brampton Chapel, Mr. Nasir Masai. He is going to say a few words and lead us in uh, silent prayer. And before he does it, uh, we have a few tokens of appreciation, a couple of gifts prepared for our presenter of the day, so he can present to us. Thank you. 